How's it going, everyone? It's Pilot Flame, and I'm back with a, another video. We got the webcam just a little bit lower than what we'd like. There we go. Got it fixed, I think. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, I'm Pilot Flame, and I'm back with some news. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of things uh, being released. Um, Riot Games coming out with basically everything that Blizzard does, effectively, and with Blizzard being in a bit of a downturn at the moment, everyone's going to be looking to these games to transfer over most likely um so the i'm going to go through the couple ones that i'm uh, interested in first and then we'll get on to the league of legends um action that we can see uh coming in the preview for season 10 so legends of ruin terror i'm a big fan of card games uh this looks like this is what, what you can see it's a bit harder to to see there but um it's basically kind of a crossbreed between how hearthstone works um with how magic the gathering works where you can basically block um minions attacking um, and then basically it revolves around playing other smaller stuff and you have champions which can then be basically upgraded as the game goes on and you're basically trying to destroy the enemy's nexus which is these little colored things on the side you start with 20 health it functions on the same mana system um, from 1 to 10 mana which gaining mana once per turn and also I'm just gonna see if I can mute this here um, and let's see if we can get a shot of the board here so, as you can see, uh, there's a sword and a shield on either side. The sh sword is the attacking person, so you can actually do, like in Yu-Gi-Oh, where you can actually use cards um, on your opponent's turn. So if somebody attacks me, I can use a trap card or a spell or something like that, um, which is uh, you know, something that uh, can be... Uh, can be quite uh, quite nice. Um, it has some element of counterplay, and basically, the in the video here, I would encourage you guys to go and watch this if you haven't done so already. Um, they basically go over all of the different games that they used to play, um, like the Magic: The Gathering, the Hearthstone, and the two guys behind it um, are going through all the different um, all the different facets of what they liked about those games, and they're basically going to be implementing it into this without the you know RNG elements and all, all those sorts of things. So. That looks to be super, super cool. There's also a really cool system. Let me see if I can find it here on the actual video itself. Yeah, your cards your way. So basically, you can you can level up here, and then you can go with the different regions. So you have Demacia, the Freljord, um, Shadow Isles, uh, Ionia, Noxus, all the different regions that you know of uh, from, from what we know in League of Legends. Um, and the Ruin Terror world, and it basically you level up these up what looks to be level 20, and you get these different wards. One of those, as you saw, is a rare wild card, which actually allows you to get any card you want in the game. Um, alternatively, you can pay to buy cards for packs, or you can use the 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 Hearthstone's equivalent of dust. They're calling it shards, um, similar to how we make champions in League of Legends, um, and you get uh, you can then craft those cards uh, in your deck as well. Um, the, also the nice thing as well is that you can, uh, much like Magic the Gathering where they have two different, uh, two different colors in a deck, so you can have like a blue-white control, uh, you can have, uh, maybe a red-green, uh, like a mid-range style deck or a, f uh, red-black aggro, um, you can do the same, uh, in this as well, uh, where you can have like Ionia Demacia deck, you can have a Shadow Wilds Freljord deck, um, depending on how you want to basically play it out. Um, and then you have, as you can see, the, the, the champions and that sort of stuff, uh, which have different abilities and then get upgraded and then have these really cool animations, as you just saw uh, on the screen there. Uh, so all the information is on playruinterra.com. Uh, you can pre-register now, um, and they're actually having a... a 10 day period where you can actually play the game uh, if you can if you register um, you go to basically uh, you sign into what's called your Riot account now so that would be the same thing that you use to log into your League of Legends account so I signed in signed in with mine and I have yet to receive the email for the account activation you have to do that first before your account gets activated um, they may not be doing any more accounts but I've seen people like the likes of uh, Disguised Toast um, the likes of uh, Scaro who are uh, avid card uh card players. Kriparian is another one who is uh, Hearthstone. Um, they're all playing it uh, right now. Kriparian was playing it on stream last night um, as well. And then we were all trying to figure out why are they doing a, why are they making this Riot client? They don't have any games other than TFT and League of Legends. Well now they're going to have a lot more. And speaking of a lot more, something that people probably didn't actually think uh, is this Project A. 
So it is a tactical shooter, very similar to how Overwatch plays in a sense from the looks of it. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit of the, the video now. It's a bit uh, potentially a bit cut off. Uh, let's get into some of the, the gameplay here. So you can see it's a it's it's very Overwatch esque uh, in a, in a sense, um, but probably has uh, different mechanics and also built in a slightly different world. Obviously, the graphic design is very similar to that of Overwatch. Obviously, a direct competitor of Blizzard, but obviously you can see different animations, different cool things that they can do. And this is obviously an early development stage um, as well. Uh, very very interested. I'm not particularly interested in shooters but this is probably something that's going to be quite uh, quite cool for some people I thought this was probably the coolest part of the whole video where she, they made this wall and then was able to just uh, once it broke then they were able to uh, shoot through it and that sort of stuff which is a uh, quite quite cool and then it's not it's not just guns as well you can see they jump up and they throw knives and do all kinds of crazy stuff as well so it's a lot of it looks like a, a whole lot of fun and you know they have a uh, you know a bunch of different things going on here how many characters they have i don't know if it's going to play to overwatch we have like your ultimate type of uh thing that should also be interesting to see as well uh also with uh with riot games they're introducing a fighter game which we saw a glimpse of which was just when darius was just beating the crap out of i think it was ari um they also have another game which i'm also interested in which is basically if anyone knows of um football manager or nfl manager of that sort um it's basically a game where you're going to be the coach you set up the tactics you set up the how you want to play the game you do the pick ban you're the coach on stage effectively and then you have to see how your players develop and they're basically starting it off with just the lpl players uh, and then they're going to go from there so that seems also to be fun they also hinted um at an mmo um, they also have an animated series called Arcane. Make sure to check that out as well. That should be uh, all of the stuff is 2020 um, release dates, and they had projects A through I think K or L or something like that. So it seems to be they're they're going they're going all out with this one. Um, so that's uh, quite uh, quite interesting there. And then on to the main game that they're looking to uh, to obviously keep keep going is obviously league of legends and what they're changing in 2020 gameplay so the preseason patch is going to be 9.23 um that's coming in november uh if i check the calendar here uh so we're on the 16th potentially 9.21 uh, maybe uh tuesday so maybe second third week of november maybe uh maybe the 19th 26th somewhere in there is where we're looking um yeah, so let's let's take a look at this. I've only briefly gone over this, so I'm going to kind of run through it um, somewhat quickly, but giving you all the details that we can here. Uh, so preseason 2020 gameplay, Rise of the Elements, welcome to the preseason. They had a blog, you should go check that out as well. Uh, revealed that they're revealed that this year's preseason will be transformative, uh, but left details hiding in the fog of war for this time, and it's the 10th anniversary, so here's the full reveal. So basically they've done a change with the elemental dragons. So the dragons still are represented by the same uh, the same concept. So there's still an infernal, there's still a mountain, there's still a uh, ocean, and there's still a cloud drake. However, they definitely do different things now. Um, in the in the game as it currently stands only three dragons can spawn um at a, at any given time in the whole game so basically one dragon will be lost uh in the game so if infernal cloud and ocean spawn you know that you won't be getting any mountain dragons in that game um next uh the way it also works is that after the 35 minutes if the next dragon were to spawn it was going to be the um what's it called the the big dragon at the very end, um, Eternal Dragon, I can't remember what it's called, uh, da, 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 what's it called, Elder Dragon, that's the one I was spacing out on in the name, um, so basically they wanted to make the dragons more impactful, and they also wanted to make it feel like every game was going to be slightly different, um, where the RNG element isn't going to be impactful to where it's like it's going to detriment your team, however, some things will cause playing styles to have to be somewhat adaptive, um, which makes, uh, flex pick champions or champions that can are a bit more uh, flexible in the game uh, come into a big part uh, which is why we'll also see um, with the introduction of the champion that they've introduced Senna uh, or will be introducing that's another one of their projects that's also going to be quite uh, quite interesting because she's a support 
But anyway, let's go on to it. So the Infernal Dragon, uh, Infernal Rift. The Infernal Dragon sunders the new rift, creating pathways through buff camps and burning away brushes. So as you can see here on the screen, this is the uh, red buff pit. Uh, I'm just going to unzoom out of this a little bit. Um, and you can see there that the red buff has its walls taken out. Um, so adding a little bit more to that. Also, if you notice, the uh, dragon pit here is actually uh, a lot wider uh, than it was before. These walls have been taken down uh, quite a bit. They, they're usually out here-ish. Um, so that's something to also take into consideration as well. Um, and the infernal dragon, as we'll see, is pretty much the same as what it did before. Let me just zoom in on the text a little bit here. So the ocean dragon now brings new life to the rift. It expands existing brush and uh, adds a uh, flood of water, as it were, giving things new life in the rift. Honey fruit plants will now sprout up in each jungle quadrant. So uh, more sustained basically is basically what it's going for. Um, sneak around the jungle or look for a new brush opportunity. So if we look at the the uh, image here, I'm gonna have to find a medium in between all of these. Um, you can see that there is a brush right here and actually in the dragon pit. Um, so that's something interesting there. And then we also have, that's the cloud drake one. There we go. This is a brush uh, that is usually only half the width here. Um, so that's something that's uh, going to uh, make the brush a little bigger. This one looks like it's a little bit longer as well. Um, so that's something also interesting to, to see um, uh, for that. So the Ocean Dragon creating more brush and more sustain basically around the map. Um, we'll get onto the buffs also after we see all the images. So the Cloud Drake spawns airflow currents. So basically it makes like a slipstream. Uh, so in these areas where you see these uh, these wisps, as it were, uh, these these wispy areas are you get more movement speed, uh, whether it's in combat or out of combat. I'm still not sure. I'm pretty sure it's all, um, but but we'll see. And let me look at the cloud drake uh, here. All around the red buff has uh, has the air currents to make you move that much faster. And then the mountain drake uh, triggers a seismic shift through the rift. Bluffs of rocks erupt and causing new choke points and ambush locations. Uh, so for a big AOE Wombo. So if we look here, there's a wall here. So I can only imagine a rumble ult going right through this channel here. So that should be something that's a, a bit scary uh, uh, when fighting around the, the, the mountain, mountain Drake. And then if we also look here, it creates uh, more terrain uh, for, for channels in, inside here near the, near the red buff. Um, so that's something to also take care of. Also, it looks like that there's another one here as well that's just cut off at the very bottom of the image, so that it could be something else as well. So basically it says, we wanted to make Elemental Drakes fair to both teams, regardless of which team is ahead on dragons. Uh, when creating the new layouts, we wanted to make sure that it was exciting and fair for both sides of the rift. So you don't want to have a disadvantageous red side uh, with an advantageous blue side or vice versa. We want to make uh, the rifts feel intuitive, even in your first game. We also uh, want to avoid creating new gameplay mechanics in favor of expanding summoners, uh, summoners rift elements that you already are familiar with. So they don't want to make the maps completely different to where it's like, this is like playing CSGO where the, the, you have to learn the map completely. Uh, this just adds little nuances that'll change things uh, ever so slightly um, as well. Um, so just we want to make sure uh, yeah, that feels intuitive, even in your first game. So, what do the buffs do now? We wanted to make the buffs uh, both uh, equal in satisfaction and in strength. So they still grant you the permanent stacking buffs, but the buffs work a little bit differently. So, Infernal, AD and AP, Ocean, Regen of Missing Health every second. That seems to be in combat as well. No more resource, so no more mana on that. Cloud, gain cooldown reduction to your ultimate. Now, that could be quite scary, depending on which champions you are. Um, I'm interested to see how it would work or what percentage it is when for the likes of shapeshifters like Jace or Elise. And then mountainous figures, so no more turrets getting completely obliterated. Uh, you have the mountain uh, or, or baron getting obliterated because you have uh, increased armor and uh, magic resist. Um, so the way it works now is that three dragons only spawn in the game, like we said before. 
uh, which means that on the fourth dragon, if you were to take all four dragons, you would have the majority of one of the three dragons. Um, in some case, whether it be 2-1-1 one, one, or 3-1, um, you would have a majority dragon. So, how does this work? So the way the rift changes is that these rifts occur on the third dragon. So when the third dragon spawns, the rift changes to this to one of these maps. So if a cloud dragon spawns, you get all these currents, and it stays like that once that dragon has spawned. And that dragon will be the only dragon that spawns for the rest of the game. So if you got Inferno, 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 you're going to keep getting Inferno for the rest of the game. And the thing is, once you have three Infernal dragons, that's it. As from from what we have right now, whether they increase it to four, um, who knows? Um, but it seems like that on the fourth elemental drake kill, instead of getting so, let's say it's let's say it's the first three dragons are infernal. Blue side gets all three dragons. On the fourth dragon, it's going to be an infernal dragon. The map's already going to have changed. You get a buff called Dragon Soul. Now, what this Dragon Soul does is it then gives you a buff based on what dragons you have what dragon you killed on that dragon so the dragon soul for infernal every three seconds your next attack or damaging spell creates a small AOE explosion presumably it's going to be something along the likes of maybe like a heimerdinger grenade so it's going to be pretty 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 small maybe maybe a couple maybe a teemo or two uh wide i would think um and it deals adaptive damage uh based on your bonus attack damage ability power and bonus health uh, the Ocean Dragon Soul, dealing any damage triggers strong health and resource regeneration. Now, that's important. Resource regeneration being mana, uh, energy, uh, those sorts of things, uh, for three seconds. Damage to minions provides less regeneration, so they just don't want you sapping off of minions. Cloud Dragon, hitting enemies with abilities or attacks lowers the cooldowns of your base abilities, and that's important with a change that's being made to items uh, later on that we'll get into. So that's basically like a, a mini Spear of Sojin. There's the hint. Um, Mountain Dragon Soul, after not taking damage for 5 seconds, gain a shield that lasts until destroyed. The shield's magnitude scales with bonus attack, damage, ability, fire, and bonus health. So that's basically Malphite Shield, in a, in a sense. And then once the team has claimed the Dragon Soul, it becomes the Elder Dragon's turn to defend the pit. This means only one team can have Dragon Soul. So basically, on the fourth Dragon kill, whatever the fourth Elemental Drake is that they kill... They get the soul of that dragon. So if in hypothetical situation, we'll go back to, we'll make a different scenario. Let's say it's uh, the three dragons that spawn in the game is Infernal, Ocean, Cloud. Cloud being the third one spawn. Team uh, Blue Side gets the first three dragons. And then they kill the, uh, they kill the Cloud on their fourth dragon kill. They get the Cloud Dragon soul. And then after that, no more elemental dragons spawn. And only the Elder Dragon will spawn from then on. So once team once a team has four dragons, that's it. Um, then the Elder Dragon spawns. So the Elder Dragon is completely different. It has no interaction with the Elemental Dragons at all. So basically, Elder is uh, Elder Buff is more satisfying. Elder Buff does not favor the team with more dragons. Elder Dragon still grants a powerful short-term combat buff, but we're retooling it to offer teams who failed to claim the Dragon Soul a team fight focused hoped in getting back into the game so it's it's basically a potentially a get back out of uh get back into the game a kind of flip the game on its head type of buff um however if the team has the elemental drakes with them being so powerful in their own right they will more likely have the edge in achieving the elder dragon but a cool smite steal may turn the tides and you know that sort of thing to achieve this, we're moving Elder Dragon scaling with the Elemental Buffs, which we mentioned, and replacing it with new Execution component. If the Elder Dragon's burn damage affects a low-health enemy champion, they'll be consumed with Elder Immolation. I think I said that right. Killing them instantly. So we have a video of what that looks like here. So Twitch goes in. Can't see the health bars, unfortunately. Attacking the Lulu right here. And then, boom. Apologies if that was a bit loud. So basically with that, uh, we can see that it's kind of like an auto pike ult, auto 
Garen Old, you know, oh, I mean, not Garen Old, um, Darius Old, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so, but you can use the likes of Zonia's or Kindred Old or something like that to uh, basically buy time for it. However, once you take another dot tick again, it will then do that same beam again. So either you, you have to get on the fountain uh, fast enough to regen, you have to get a Kindred Old, you know, those sorts of things will be crucial um, to, uh, to that. Um, and it's it, it looks like an AOE, but it's not. It's single target uh, from the, from the way it's described. So that beam is not going to go and kill, you know, four people. It's going to be single target. It's just the animation looks that way. Um, so it says threat emulation will still be there when they become invulnerable again. So if the outer burn effect is applied a second time, back to the fountain for you. Um, so the next thing we have going on here is the uh, changes to the uh, top and bottom lane. So now you have this cove. Uh, where you can uh, basically outmaneuver people, uh, potentially the likes of a fight breaks out in top lane, a NAR can potentially utilize this, um, a Rumble can potentially utilize this, uh, you know, those sorts of champions where they have terrain based uh, uh, advantages, uh, with the brush obviously being split up in the gaps uh, in here, you can then maneuver in and out. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if you can how how minions basically path in here. Uh, that's also uh, interesting as well. And it's not just in the top lane; it is also in the bottom lane as well. Uh, these are what's called the alcoves, and basically they said we don't expect the alcoves to be used constantly throughout laning phase, but every so often players may turn a two v three into a double kill, or perhaps a certain um, escape from certain death due to a unique layout. We look forward to seeing how players make use of them on the rift. So it's very very cool, very very cool. And then another change which they've done to the map is they've added a brush before the ramps of both the uh, by the both blue buffs on Dragon and near Dragon and Baron. So Baron being on blue side over here, and Dragon being on red side over here. So those are pretty cool changes. I like those a lot. It also makes it so that uh, you can potentially. If you wanted to pull, so like Rengar as an example, can utilize this brush or, or, or this brush as well. You can pull the blue buff out to like here-ish and then he can jump back and forward. Um, it also makes it so that you can potentially hide in this brush for people trying to get vision onto your blue buff. Um, it's, it's quite cool, quite cool. Um, then we're looking at the other gameplay changes. So it's not just all about the map. Uh, jungle diversity. So early jungling revolves around Krogs due to their high gold and XP tuning resulting in pretty one-dimensional pathing and a heavy blue side disadvantage, uh, blue side advantage, sorry, due to the bot lane's proximity to the Krogs. The Krogs being uh, down the down the bottom side of the map on blue side and on the top side of the map on red side. Uh, we're ex making XP and gold changes to open up more diverse jungle options and strategies, most significantly reducing Krogs' value and buffing Gromps so that jungler can hit level three off any combined outer camp. Um, so it's going to be buff Krogs Gromp. And then a third camp will allow them to hit level three. Um, so that's also interesting as well. They're also doing respawn timer icons. You know how you get a gray icon at one minute, uh, a yellow icon at 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I want to say. Um, and then uh, obviously the, the icon for when the, when the, when the, what's the name spawns. So just a little bit of quality of life there. Most stranglers time their, their, um, um, their rubber banded camps anyway. Um, uh, rubber bandage just basically means that once it comes back at a the same level as you, you get obviously more XP from it, and that's after you've killed it once. So if I go red, Krugs, um, Raptors, uh, blue, Scuttle, Grump, Wolves, when I base and come back, my uh, Krugs will have rubber banded so that they will now be the same level as me, so I get more XP and gold from them. Um, and a, like I said, the respawn timers will be like red and blue buff uh, on, on the map. So that's kind of interesting. So they're probably going to have to make the Gromp take just as much time as the uh, as the Krugs. So maybe no longer smaller Krugs um, in, in the camp. Or they just make the Gromp like super, super strong. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm pretty, presumably they're going to probably slightly lower the, the Krugs HP, the smaller ones anyway, and then make the Gromps bigger. Uh, like make it make it um, a much stronger uh, single mob, um, and then we move on to top lane influence. So, for a high stakes solo lane, top lane hasn't trans hasn't been able to translate a win into an effective mid late game carry for their team, particularly at higher levels of play. Combined with this preseason increased focus on elemental dragons drawing fights to the bot lane, 
thinking about top lane here. We're shifting power around to give top laners better opportunities to translate their wins into games, uh, game wins. We're increasing base minion XP slightly so solo laners level a bit faster and we're reducing the amount of XP generated when allies share XP so bot lane will level a bit more slowly. We're also slightly uh, decreasing jungle XP. So your initial jungle XP seems to be good but then it will slowly taper off. So your the jungle and the support slash AD are going to be, now they're usually like a level uh, below the, the solo laners. Now you're going to potentially see like level 11 mid laner, level 11 top laner, level 8, maybe 9 uh, uh, 80 carry when they're playing really well. Um, so we'll have to see how that XP kind of translates. Additionally, to balance out the map objectives, we're, we're spawning Rift Herald earlier in the game and allowing her to respawn if she's killed early. So presumably they're going to make it spawn around maybe 8 minutes uh, and they'll have a respawn timer of maybe 6. So if you kill it, um, at like the 10 minute mark uh, it'll respawn at 16 minutes and then you can get another uh, crack at it as well presumably they're gonna have to make the rift herald probably not as strong as what it is now because obviously two rift heralds just mean like turret demolition mind you don't have mountain dragons anymore uh to for turret demolition so that should be something uh interesting to see as well uh support item changes so these are this is going to be a, a pretty much a complete revamp in a sense on how we think of support items we think of them as we have to either rush it or we have to get at least the tier two and then moby boots and then we we basically delay what items we want like the redemption like the um uh like this uh uh, like the Zeke's convergence, you know, all these sorts of items uh, that we could potentially get if we wanted to get our full tier um, support item. So what are they doing to those now? We're refreshing support choices in the shop. They'll be less poachable and have an expanded quest system that should be more uh, satisfying overall. We're also reducing the com current complexity and rules bloat of the lineup. So to a new player in, or, or a inexperienced player, looking at the support items, you kind of there's a lot of stuff going on there, so I guess they're trying to simplify that. Towards the goal of creating more satisfying items, supports will no longer have to upgrade these starter items in the shop, so you don't have to invest your gold into this item once you have it initially. You would just basically quest it up, and then it will gain the stats as it goes along, and you can invest your items into other things like Redemption, Zeke's, those sorts of things. Instead, the quest now automatically upgrades items to their second and third tiers when milestones are reached, yeah, with the ward passive baked into those upgrades. So first is gold generation and stats, um, then stats improved with uh, three wards added, and then the major stat upgrade, four wards uh, capacity and gold generation passive is removed after it hits tier three. So presumably this is going to be a uh, a longer you know a longer process before you hit this max tier um if i had to guess um so and then obviously you get the gold generation going down uh for uh or going basically being removed on the tier three there must be some way to where you could still get items throughout the game or the progression is probably going to be similar to what we see now hopefully um so this unlocks the support to progress towards items that they um would not be able to build with their first 1500 gold as we mentioned before the starting support items won't carry as many stats as before, but we think this is a fair trade-off for a jump start supports are getting on their other items. So effectively, their first item is free in their support item in a sense. Um, so uh, what we're what we're looking at here is that there's going to have so coin was removed, and then they're going to have four different support items. You're going to have uh, a poke AD, a poke AP, uh, a tank AD, and a tank AP. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is, so a poke AD champion will potentially be like, um, I don't know, like when support MF uh, was a thing. Um, you would get the AD for, for her ult. Um, it has low HP, but it has the spell these passive, so you can still probably proc it with like um, high AP and low HP. So this is like your Zyra's, your your um, your Sona's, your, you know, people like that that are going to be poking the whole laning phase. Um low AD, high HP, so an AD tank oriented uh, jungler, uh, uh, not jungler, uh, support rather. So this could be uh, potentially um, the likes of maybe Pike um, as an example, because he obviously works off of AD and HP, so it depends off 
what it, what it works with and also his regeneration of HP in the landing phase is quite high so that may be something he can work with and then a low AP high HP targets passive could be something like the use of a Nautilus or a Braum somebody has that has AP ratios that could be used um, in that sense uh, they basically said when assessing both play patterns targets and coin encourage a safer more sustained play style to the spell thieves aggressive one so basically they kind of removed um, the, the coin because of allowing range champions uh, to use the execute of uh, Targon's uh, passive um, because it makes it so that it's a little bit uh, a little bit fairer but it probably means a lower threshold potentially for the range champions so they have actually lasted it uh, somewhat properly um, so we'll see how that execution kind of plays out or what the execution threshold uh, is and then finally, we're adding a new poaching rule that significantly reduces the gold that you get from minions if you're farming them consistently. The tuning we want allows supports to secure a last hit every now and then, or even farm an occasional wave like uh, like today. The penalty only kicks uh, in if the item holders begin farming like non-support. So basically, if you get one CS, it basically just disables the, or slows it down significantly. Um, so now, basically, it's going to pausing uh, on the gold generation uh, when you do take CS um, but it's going to basically keep an eye on uh, where you are farming wise uh, if you're farming consistently so if you're buying a support item and you got 100 CS or something like that in 10 minutes then it, it, it'll have already kicked in by then presumably it's going to work the way Bounty Hunter works so if you have more CS than anyone in the game uh, then not going to work out too well uh, lethality items. So lethality items are pretty core for AD assassins and fighters, but only dust blade and ghost blade commonly being used. Choices feel limited, and we want to make Edge of Night more attractive. So dust blade and ghost blade are mostly the same. However, Edge of Night is basically Banshee's Veil now um, for AD champions. They're introducing a new item called Sanguine Blade, which basically, when you're out split pushing or you're out by yourself, so if there's no one within a certain range of you, you gain a, uh, an attack speed buff. Uh, which is quite uh, quite nice and then they're exploring other lethality item options so you just don't have you're done, not just sitting on like a serrated dark at the end of the game uh, for a last item doubling the number of attractive lethality items giving increases assassin's ability to tailor their builds which is good we want them to go with a two item power spike and branch into raw 80 items like guardian angel or black cleaver um, you know, after the two items like however the full lethality boat should be a strong option against squishy comps though so they want to get that balance right because if it's where it's just lethality is just completely under tuned um, and then the items you need like five of them to actually kill anyone then it's completely useless but if you get one item and like a or two lethality items and you're just one shotting everything then that's obviously something that needs to be a needs to be um, balanced correctly because with more lethality items just means more flat pen which can be quite scary um, and then for other items, we're removing Spear of Sojin, so as we mentioned before, the ult cooldown as well as the Cloud Dragon Soul, which reduces your abilities uh, upon uh, hitting enemy champions. Uh, they're removing that because obviously its passive was too synergistic with um, cooldown related champions like Renekton, like Jax, those sorts of things. Um, so they're just removing it complete, completely. Um, they're also looking to uh, look at other changes for items during the preseason as well, but obviously with the introduction of Cloud Drake reducing your ultimate CD um, on kill and then obviously you have um, and by on kill I mean killing of the dragon and then obviously having the reduction with the, the, the dragon soul that's obviously something that they need to um, they needed to remove and I thought Spear of Sojin was a very problematic item in the first place to begin with uh, and then Keystone Rune changes so we're tweaking some of them so Conqueror is going to basically go back to the um, if anyone remembers Fervor, where they have the stacking ADAP, but this is just going to be stacking adaptive damage. Um, so that's probably going to be something that's a little bit better. Kleptomancy is uh, not going to be no longer like the, I get just, I just need money off this person. It's going to be more of elixir drops, potion drops, that sort of thing. So it's going to be more of a sustain uh, oriented uh, keystone. And then Aftershock is what they're also looking at. So you're not going to have the likes of Rakan going in using uh, using his W knocking people up and taking no damage on the way out or the likes of you know fiddlesticks going in and 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 fearing somebody underneath the turret taking six turret shots and then walking out without even losing half his health 
Um, so that's something that they're looking to make the lowering the flat resistances, but buffing it the the more tanky you are. So you want the the aftershock on the likes of Tank Malphite, on the likes of um, on the likes of like a Sunfire Cage Spirit Visage, uh, Poppy or Garen or, or somebody like that. You know, so that's obviously what they what what they are looking to do. Um, so that uh, seems to be all the changes here. So this is CU 9.23. Uh, we're currently on 9.20, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's going to be two patches, and then you'll see this sort of stuff. Um, so available soon on the PBE for an extended four-week cycle. Rise of the Elements ships patch 9.23 in November. So like we said, it's probably going to be mid to late November uh, from these changes. So overall, I think these changes are very good. I'm really, I really like the the kind of the different element, uh, no pun intended there, that they're adding to the 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 RNG as it were for for the rift. Um, you have to have a, you know adapt your adapt your playing style based on the terrain. Um, so it does make it a bit a bit memorable. It does make it different every game. It's not an RNG element that is going to be quite hindering. It's not going to directly be like, hey, because this wall's here, um, I can't use Camille in any game. It, there's a Mountain Drake, as an example. Um, th that's just a, a hypothetical. I'm not sure if it would be advantageous or disadvantageous, but um, it's those sorts of things that you would, you know, it's it's got probably most things are going to benefit the uh, uh, the champion as well, and also they made the buffs kind of depending on how they're scaled uh, to be quite um, to be quite different in a sense and not overpowering as it were. So like obviously getting double mountain infernal, you're going to destroy any uh, single target objective or team fight. If you got triple mountain and you were like a Heimerdinger with a with like a vein or something, you drop the big turret and the Baron's dead in 10 seconds between two people, you know, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, Cloud was very hard to balance for for Ryan. They've obviously made multiple changes over, over its time as well, so now they're making it so that, obviously, it's going to affect the majority of League of Legends champions than it will uh, others. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what we're... Um, what we're looking at there so let me know what you guys think let me know how what you're most excited for especially in all of the uh games that riot has released uh i'm looking forward to the preseason changes i'm also looking forward to all the games they have to offer uh legends of ruin terror that out as well looks like a lot of fun make sure you get your if you can get the early access you can but also all this stuff is coming in 2020 um and uh who knows we'll see what else they have to offer so uh yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video give us a thumbs up if you didn't like the video give it a thumbs down and let me know why in the comments below uh make sure to follow me on twitter pilotflame226 um to see more updates for any league news that we will see and that's going to do it for today's video so wherever you are in the world have a good day have a good night and take care see ya